सुंदर सुंदर शे सजल जल दश्यामल तनु सरोजाक्ष स्रग्वी मुकुट कट काद्या भरणवान शरद्राकानाथ प्रतिमावदन श्री मुरली काम वाहन धीयो गोपी गण परिवृता कुंकुमचिता यो ब्रह्माणं विदधाति पूर्वं यो वै वेदांश्च प्रहिणोति तस्मै तग्वं हदेवमात्म बुद्धि प्रकाशम् मुमुक चुरवाई शरणमहम् प्रपद्ये Dear devotees, we'll have a few minutes of Nam Sankirtan and after that I'll speak to you on the meaning of holy. Govinda, 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 Radhe, Radhe, Govinda.
बिहारी लाल की टुडे वर सेलिब्रेटिंग होली वी ऑल नो दैट इट्स स्टिल फीडिंग बैक we all know that when we celebrate holy we play with colors and maybe years ago we used to play with color that was actually taken from the tesu flower you could say you know classical holy and nowadays maybe we're throwing chemical uh, powders on each other the style of playing holy the details may change but the meaning of holy and the origin of holy stays the same and and what the impact holy is supposed to have in our hearts that stays the same whether we're playing with wet color whether we're playing with dry color whether it's from a tesu or whether it's uh, a chemically manufactured color whatever it may be the meaning of holy hasn't changed through the ages and the origin of holy we all know comes from the story of pralad pralad was a great devotee of god at such a young age in fact you could say before he was born he was already a devotee his mother had been uh, kidnapped by indra because he was in the daitya pralad was born in the daitya race which means that they were the enemies of the devatas it's the way it's set up in our brahmand <laughs> devatas against the daityas the asuras so pralad was uh, born to a mother and father who were in the asur race the demon race nonetheless he still ended up being a devotee indra the king of the devatas he had kidnapped his mother out of fear because he had heard that this boy who's going to be born to her he's going to be great so indra was naturally afraid of him even before pralad was born he didn't know pralad was going to be a devotee of god he wasn't going to follow the ways of the asuras so anyway narad ji came and saved pralad's mother and the unborn pralad from indra and kept them in his ashram for some time 
During that time, Naradji gave teachings to Prahladji's mother and to Prahlad while Prahlad was still in the womb. So Prahlad learned the whole philosophy of the meaning of life and who is God and what is the path to God. He learned all of that in the womb. So he was born a natural devotee of Sri Krishna. It goes to show you this is one, one lesson of Prahlad's uh, Akyan that we rarely focus on, but all you parents, although it's our duty as parents to educate our children and guide them and sometimes scold them or discipline them and give them affection, we have to do all of that. But nonetheless, there's no guarantee how someone is going to turn out. You see, a Mahapurush like Prahlad can be born in a demon family. Anything can happen. So it's not only because of what you do as parents, the child comes with his sanskars as well. And demons have been born in the family of saints. Look at Sri Krishna's family in Dwarika. He ended up having to eliminate all of them because they became a nuisance to the entire earth planet. They were born in Sri Krishna's family and Prahlad was born in the family of Hiranyakashipu who was God's sworn enemy. So who can say what child is going to be born in what kind of family? Nonetheless, you try your best as parents. But Prahlad grew up as a devotee in the house of the sworn enemy of Krishna. Hiranyakashap was the older brother of Hiranyaksh. They were very powerful demons of that time, long ago. In fact, they ruled not only this earth planet, but also Swarg. They had also taken Indra's throne from him, and Indra was cowering somewhere, staying out of the way. But Bhagwan Shri Krishna came as the divine boar, Varaha Avatar, and he killed Hiranyaksh, the younger brother at the time that he was bringing uh, Prithvi up from the depths of the ocean of Pralay, at that time Hiranyaksh came and attacked him and Sri Krishna in the form of the divine boar killed him. So since that time his older brother Hiranyakashipu, who was Prahlad's father, he swore that if I ever get to meet Vishnu, Vishnu meaning Krishna, Krishna is almighty form, Vishnu, if I ever get to meet him I'm going to fight a battle against him. He killed my younger brother. I want revenge. So he was the sworn enemy of Supreme God. And in his family, Prahlad was born. Now, just like you've all seen in movies and maybe even in, in some of the places where you grew up in India long ago, there may have been a Gurukul where maybe you went or someone you knew was sent in order to learn in order to get an education in the scriptures and also basic education, like we go to a boarding school or something nowadays. So the Daityas also have a boarding school or Gurukul for their kids, but it's to learn how to be a better demon. So they're sent there and they learn that, uh, no, 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 don't ever think of anyone else. You should never, you know, go out of your way to be nice to anyone. Only think about fulfilling your own selfish desires. You should try your utmost to enjoy this world through all of your five senses. Don't worry about anything else. Just your own enjoyment of the moment. That's what those boys learn there in the demon Gurukul. So Prahlad was there in that same Gurukul and much to his father's surprise after he had been there for some time, he came back, he was visiting the home for a few days and his father, Hiranyakashipu, asked him, you know, he sat him on his lap lovingly, petting his head, holding his son, and he said, oh son, so tell me, what makes you happy in life? So he said, oh father, I just love to remember God all the time. And his father said, what? Is that what they're teaching you in this Gurukul? He called for his guards. You call those teachers in the Gurukul. I want them brought here right away. So they came. What are you teaching these boys in the Gurukul? My son is talking to me about worshipping God and remembering God all the time. Is that what you're teaching them? 
No, we never taught him any such thing. We don't know where he got such ideas in his head. It certainly wasn't from us. Hiranyakashipu, of course, being a demon, was known for his temper, but he said, I'm giving you one more chance. You take this boy back to the Gurukul and you fix his thinking. I don't want to hear such talk ever again. So as far as you're concerned, I'm God. I don't want to hear of worshipping any God. I'm God. Worship me. So Prahlad went back to the Gurukul. And there, this is told in the Bhagavatam, that uh, in their free time when the boys got to, you know, sit together and talk, Prahlad used to give instructions to the other boys of his age. At that time he was probably five or six years old. And he used to try to also explain to them, oh, what's the meaning of life, why should you think of God all the time. So those boys were thinking, think of God, but we're so young. Even, never mind the fact we're demons, we're so young, we're just little boys. Why do we have to think of God now? So Prahlad told them, Kaumara Acharit Pragyo Dharman Bhagavati Niha He said, how do you know you're going to get to grow up? Right now you're just boys, how do you even know you'll get to become teenagers? You have no such guarantee. You don't know how long you're going to live for. So start worshipping God from now, he told them. He said, do you know what the meaning of life is? govinde <laughs> Yat sarvatra tadikchanam. What is the meaning of life? He used the word swarth. Paraha swartha. Swarth means your what you want or what's good for you. What's in your self-interest. Par means supreme. What's in your absolute best self-interest? That's the meaning of your life. So he said there's only one thing, eta va neva lo min. In this whole world, there's only one thing that is best for everybody. Ekanta bhakti govinde. It means wholehearted devotion to Govinda, Krishna. That's the only thing that's best for everybody. So Prahlad, being a devotee of Krishna, was teaching his friends this. There in the demon Gurukul. Some time later, he ended up again on, on a vacation, back visiting his home. And uh, his father again sat him on his lap and was saying, Oh, my dear son Prahlad, tell me, what do you like to do? How do you like to spend your time? So Prahladji says, Shravanam kirtanam vishno smaranam padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakhyam Atmani Vedanam Now he's giving his father Navadha Bhakti Ka Upadesh. Navadha Bhakti, the nine different forms of Bhakti. This is also told in the Bhagavatam. His father was even more shocked this time. He said, I've already given you one warning and you're still talking about my sworn enemy in front of my face? You are not my son. I cannot accept you as my son anymore. If you're the friend of my enemy, then you are also my enemy. And having the nature of a demon, he called his guards and he says, you finish this boy. Take your weapons and finish him. So imagine at this time, Prahlad is seven years old. Imagine a seven-year-old boy faced with that situation. But Prahlad was not perturbed in the least. Why? Because his mind was always remembering Krishna. That's it. Whatever situation he was in, he just always remembered Krishna is with me and I belong to him. That's it. So the guards came at him. Did he say, oh Krishna, save me? No. He didn't bother. He didn't mind either way. He just kept thinking of Krishna. Krishna protected him automatically. He didn't have to ask for protection. 
So when that didn't work, the guards' weapons couldn't even bend a hair on Prahlad's head. They tried other methods. They tried throwing him off a mountain. They put him in a pit of poisonous snakes. They threw him in the ocean. They put him in, a, in front of a stampede of wild elephants. Nothing could harm this boy. He was just the same. And he wasn't bothered by anything that was happening. Uh, amazing if you think about it. What adult, never mind a small boy, what adult could remain calm in such a situation? That was the level of Prahlad's devotion. That his mind was always in Krishna, no matter what the situation. And he was so confident in his relationship with Krishna that even in such dire circumstances, he never asked Krishna to save him. What a great devotee. So when all else failed, Prahlad's aunt, Hiranyakashipu's sister, Holika, came and said, I have a boon that I cannot be burnt by fire. Brahma had given this boon to her. So here's a good plan. Why don't we build a huge pyre? I'll sit on that with the boy in my lap. You can light the fire and of course I'll be saved and he'll be burnt. So they said, yes, that sounds like a good way to handle this. Let's do it. So they built the pyre. She sat on the very top holding Prahlad. Prahlad wasn't squirming, trying to get away. Again, just thinking of Krishna. They lit the fire and Holika was burnt and Prahlad didn't even feel warm sitting there in the fire. The secret being that his mind was wholly, perfectly in Krishna. Just like when they had given Dhruv the poison to drink, Dhruv is another great example of a childhood devotee, he had been given poison in the milk to drink. So you can say he drank the milk and in the milk there was poison which was vyapt. That milk was pervaded with the poison. But did Prahlad get the effect of the poison? No, he got the effect of Krishna who pervaded the poison which pervaded the milk because Krishna pervades everything. So since his mind was in Krishna, Krishna was in the poison too. So he got the effect of Krishna. He didn't have any effect of drinking the poison. Similarly, the fire, the weapons, the elephants, the falling off the mountain, the sea, nothing could harm Prahlad because his mind was perfectly in Krishna all the time. None of us are at this level, so don't, after hearing my speech, go out and test that, uh, okay, let, let me, uh, you know, I'll go to downtown Austin and step out in front of a moving bus and see that, uh, okay, I'll just remember Krishna. No, we're not at that level. The second you saw the bus, you would forget. <laughs> it's true. Who can remember in such a situation? So when we're at that level of Prahlad, we don't have to worry for anything. But for now, we have to try to emulate Prahlad in this way that we should try to remember Krishna all the time. In the end, his father said, I'm going to do it myself. I've had enough of all these other methods we're trying. I'll take care of the boy myself. So he was saying, you know, you say your God is everywhere. He said to his son, yes, father. Even now, Prahlad is being so polite to his father. Yes, father, my beloved God is everywhere. You think he's in the house of a terrible demon like me? Well, father, he is. There's nowhere that he's not. And there's a big stone pillar in the palace. He said, is he in this pillar? Yes, of course, father, he's in this pillar. So he took his huge mace, this gada, and he smashed it into the stone pillar with all his might. And as he hit, not only was there was a huge thunderous sound, which was not only the sound of the mace hitting the pillar with all of his tremendous strength, but out of that pillar appeared Sri Krishna. Out of the very pillar that he struck, he just exploded out of the pillar 
and appeared as a huge lion, half lion from the top up and man from the bottom down, Narasingh Bhagwan. So Sri Krishna appeared in this form and he dispatched with that demon very quickly. So that was the end of Hiranyakashipu. He saw for his own self that yes, Krishna is everywhere, even in a pillar in my own house, such a great demon. So at that point, all the, cel all the celestial gods were so happy that finally we're rid of this demon. We can come back and uh, reside in our celestial abodes. So they all came naturally, but there was a dilemma. Because Narsingh Bhagwan was a great, terrifying looking lion. Imagine if God wanted to become a lion, how majestic that lion would seem. And if that lion were angry at a demon, how, how frightening his features would look in anger. Such a terrifying sight it must have been. So all those devatas, they wanted to approach because it's like a tradition. If you read our scriptures, any time God performs any kind of uh, great lila to save anybody or, or help the residents of the earth planet, or any time God descends for anyone, then they normally sing some kind of stuti, where they praise God's greatness and they thank him for coming. Just like if the governor of Texas visits, uh, you know, comes to Radha Madhav Dham, we would welcome him properly, you know, offer him some special food, give him a special seat in the prayer hall, everything done, you know, according to the status of the governor. So when God visits the Brahmand, when he himself comes on the earth planet, then there has to be a proper welcome by the proper authorities. The proper authorities being Brahma, Indra, God Shiva was also there. So they were talking amongst themselves that uh, who's going to go first? We have to go and, and welcome him and thank him. But right now, with the, the way he's looking right now, who is going to go first? Brahma, you go, they're all saying. You're the creator. You create this whole Brahman out of empty space. You go. You're his, uh, you're his son. Brahma said, I'm not going in front of him like this. So they turned to God Shiva. Shivji, you destroy the whole Brahman just by opening your third eye. You have so much power. Surely you can go. He says, I'm not going in front of him when he's like this. Lakshmi ji was there. They said, oh, Mata ji, you're always there in Chir Sagar, pressing his charan. Surely you won't be afraid to go before him. No, no, no. Even I cannot go before him at this time. So Prahlad, seven-year-old Prahlad stepped forth. And he said, why are you making such a big deal out of this? This is my beloved Krishna. Follow me. So imagine seven-year-old Prahlad and behind him, they're coming carefully behind him, Brahma, Shiva, Indra, everybody behind Prahlad as he approaches Narsingh, fearlessly approaches him. He's thinking, what, this is my, my own Krishna, what do I have to be afraid of? So as he approached, all the tension and, and the divine anger, of course, God never gets angry, but in that Leela, he was behaving in an angry way. All of the anger melted from his face. And he smiled at his devotee, Prahlad, and actually picked him up. His hands were so big in that form as Narsingh that on one hand, Prahlad was able to stand comfortably. And with the other hand, he held his head and he danced out of joy. And then when he again became normal, he put his devotee down and he said, Varam Bruhi, ask for a boon. That's another tradition. The devotees sing the praises of God when he appears before them. And God tells the devotees, ask for a boon. What do you want? I'll give you whatever you want. Just ask. So when he said these words, Prahlad was struck inside that 
he's telling me to ask for something, but I consider myself to be his servant. I want to think of myself as his das. So, nasa bhritya savai banik. He actually said these words to Narsingh Bhagwan. He says, I am your servant, and the servant who asks for anything from his master, he's not a bhritya, he's, he's not a servant, he's a barnik, he's a businessman. Because it means he's trying to use his master to get something. When it's the duty, it's the dharma of a sevak to give happiness to his swami. That's it. To serve means to try to please, to give happiness to. So, oh my beloved Krishna, I have no desire to get something from you. I just want you to accept me as your servant. So does this mean you don't accept me as your servant? That you're ask, telling me to ask for something? He said, no, 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 it's not like that. It's just tradition. Where Whoever I appear before, I tell them ask for a boon and they ask for a boon. So you also ask for a boon. Prahlad said, okay, if I must ask for a boon, then I'll ask for such a boon, which will amaze him. Kamanam hridya sanroham bhavatas tu varam Bhagutam. He said, give me this boon, that in my mind, the thought of ever desiring to ask you for anything should never come. Give me that boon so that I can truly be your selfless servant. So Narsingh Bhagwan smiled. He said, my devotee has won. In the end, I have to concede defeat. Yes, have that boon. You, you will never have a selfish thought ever again. So this is in gist the story of Prahlad, which we remember every year on this day of Holi. So, what do we take from this? What are we supposed to remember as the meaning of Holi? You can think of three things. The first lesson is that God is everywhere. This story of Prahlad teaches us this. That when God resides in the pillar, in the palace of the worst demon, then where would God not be? He's everywhere. How would remembering this point affect us? If instead of only remembering it for an hour, once a year, on the occasion of Holi, how would our life change if we remembered this all the time? We would get both a positive benefit and we would be saved from a negative thing. The positive benefit of remembering that Krishna is always with us is that we would never feel alone. Much of our life is spent in avoiding loneliness. We run to our friends because we don't want to be alone. We may like a little bit of alone time here and there, but for the most part, we don't want to be left alone. We want to find friends, we want to find our family, and if we are without them, or if anyone abandons us, then we feel a great pain, a great loneliness. If we remember that Krishna is with us and we really feel that, then we never are dependent on any, anyone from outside of us we would always feel that my divine friend, Gopal, he's right here with me. What do I have to worry for? We would never fear. Whatever may happen, let it be. Let it happen. My divine friend, Govinda, is here with me. I don't have to worry for anything. Things in this world happen. The world goes up and down. Things in our life happen that we don't want to happen. Every once in a while a good thing happens, that's fine. Let the good and the bad come. I've got my divine friend Krishna here with me. So we would never worry, we would never feel alone as long as we have Krishna with us. And in addition to that, 
We would never do any wrong thing. <clears throat> it is only possible to do a wrong thing when we forget that Krishna is with us. Let's say you're going somewhere to do something wrong. It's the night time. You're sneaking off to go do something you're not supposed to. And there along the way, a friend just happens by, you know, maybe comes up behind you. Oh, hey, where are you going? Oh, nowhere, just out, you know, taking a walk, enjoying the night air. See, just from your friend coming along, you were saved from go whatever you were going to do, whatever that thing was. Oh, no, I'm just taking some air. Come, let's walk. So just from having a friend nearby, you, you decided not to do a wrong thing. In other words, we only do wrong things when we think we're alone. So if we know that we're not alone because Krishna is always with us, then how could we ever do a wrong thing? We know that we want his grace, and the same one whose grace we're desiring, we're pretending that he's not here so that we can do something wrong. That's what we do. We intellectually know God is with us. We know that Krishna is watching our every action. In fact, our every thought. But we force those thoughts out of our mind. Oh, but God is everywhere. Yes, yes, he is. Fine, I'll think about that later. Right now I want to do this thing in private, pretending that God can't see me. So if we remember that Krishna is with us, we would never do any wrong thing. Teach this one thing to your kids. We unknowingly teach our kids the opposite. We tell them, hey, mandir mein matar gashti na karna. Behave properly in the mandir. Why? Because this is God's house. God is in here. So what are we telling him? Subtly, we're saying that out there it's fine, you can do anything because God's not out there, he's only in here. So we should teach them the opposite of that. That not only in the mandir, everywhere. You should always feel you're being watched because you are. But he's not only watching to punish if we do a wrong thing, he's watching to grace. The moment a soul remembers him, Krishna's gracing. So that's one important lesson from this story of Prahlad that we have to remember, especially on Holy Day, but try to also remember it for the rest of the year, that Krishna is omnipresent. And secondly, we should remember what Prahlad asked for. He said, make my mind such that I never ever think of asking you for anything. That's another lesson. You can say that's a higher lesson. Remembering that God is everywhere, that's, that's the basic lesson you have to learn. Higher than this would be remembering that you don't have to ask worldly things from God. All you have to do is remember him. How do we even know what to ask for? If uh, you have a three-year-old son and you put a stack of money, a million dollars, in front of your three-year-old son, and on the other side you put a rasgulla or a chocolate bar, and you ask him to choose, your three-year-old boy has no idea what money is. He's going to take that chocolate bar over the million dollars. Something like that, we don't know what is the value of divine happiness because we've never experienced it. God knows because he is that divine bliss. And saints know because they've attained God, so they have that bliss. And we don't know. We're like, uh, actually, when Prahlad was leaving this earth planet, there was a pig nearby. He said to that pig, you know, I'm leaving now, I'm going to Golok. You want to come with me? Come on, let's go. So the pig, you know what pigs eat? They eat decomposing 
waste matter. The pig said, will I get my khadya padarth over there? That stuff I like to eat. Will I get that over there in Goloka Bodh, in the divine world? Prahlad said, what? I don't think there's anything like any smelly rotting thing over there in Golok, so you may not be able to find your Khadya Padarth over there in Golok abode. So the pig said, oh, I'm fine here then, you go, you go ahead. Something like that, God and the saints are saying, why don't you just let us give you divine bliss? Why do you keep asking for all these worldly things? We pray with this huge list, long list, that we want God to fulfill all of our demands. We don't even know what to ask for. Hiranyakashyap thought he knew what to ask for when, when Brahma came to him and gave him a boon because he did great austerities. He said, I want to live forever, so I'm going to ask for a boon in such a way that no, no one and no thing could ever kill me. So he said, Brahmaji, I want this boon that I should not die in the day or in the night. I should not die inside or outside. I should not die in the air or on the ground. And I should not be killed by any man or any beast or by any weapon. There, I think I covered it, all the bases. He exercised the complete power of his intellect and that was the detailed boon that he asked for. And when Sri Krishna came as Narsingh, he said, Lo, I'll honor Brahma's boon and I'll kill you both because I'm smarter than you. So he came as half man, half lion. So he was neither man nor beast. He killed him using his claws. He didn't use any weapon. He held him on his lap, so he was neither in the sky nor on the ground. He was just in the entryway of a doorway, so he was not outside or inside. And the sun had set, but it wasn't dark yet. So it was not day, nor was it night. And he killed Hiranyakashyap in this way. So we see that nobody knows what to ask for, except Prahlad. Prahlad was smart. He said, I'm yours. That's it. You give me the best thing. I don't know what to ask for. But I do know this, that I want to serve you selflessly. Which is the true goal of every soul. Jivera Swarupa Hoya Krishnera Nitya Das. Chaitanya Mahaprabhuji says that every soul is truly a servant of God because he's giving life to our soul. So when he's the one giving life to our soul, how could we do anything but love him and desire to please him? It's our nature. So Prahlad, recognizing that that is the true nature of every soul, he asked, I just want to be a loving, selfless servant to you. And if you want to give me anything, I'll leave that up to you. But I know I don't have to worry because I'm yours. Does a child have to ask for food from his parents? No, the parents know. This is my child. I have to take care of him. So I'm your child. I know you're going to take care of me. I don't have to ask you for anything. And I know you'll give me the best thing because you know what's best. I don't have to worry for that. This is the second lesson. And the third lesson is even beyond this. The third lesson is that Prahlad didn't think of God as God. You see, even when he was in that ferocious form as Narsingh, he said, no, this is my beloved Krishna. This is another lesson of Holi. You see, when Radha and Krishna came on the earth planet and they celebrated Holi, they added more fun to it by introducing the, the, that we play with all the powder and gulal and with pichkaris and everything. So on Holi Day, we get to play with Radha and Krishna. Who are Radha and Krishna? The same who, are, who was Nirsingh, the same ferocious lion, that's Krishna in one of his almighty forms. But like Prahlad, we can say, no, 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 you're not, you're not 
just Almighty God to me. You're my beloved, and I want to play holy with you. And when I say play holy, I mean really play holy with Radha and Krishna. When we go outside later and play, it already stopped raining. You see, Indra's cooperating. <laughs> when we go out and play, some of you will play a little formally with each other. If you don't know each other, you'll take a little bit, you know, go like this or on each other. Politely, you'll play. But the one, your best friend, you'll save a little extra gulal for him. And when he comes, you really rub it in his face properly. So when I say play holy with Radha and Krishna, that's what I mean. With abandon, with total freedom, you can play holy with Radha and Krishna. For now, on holy, we do it in our meditation. It's one of their leelas that they used to play holy with all of their devotees when they were here on the earth planet. So the reason they revealed those leelas on the earth planet is so we, ordinary souls, could purify our heart by thinking of those leelas. Such leela chintan is one of the easiest ways to do bhakti. This is what Kripaluji Maharaj teaches, that along with kirtan, you should think of Sri Krishna's leelas. It purifies your heart very quickly. And they're so attractive to your mind. Who wouldn't want to play holy with God? And God in his most beautiful, most attractive form, his loving form, Radha Krishna. So you can play with them with abandon. You don't have to hold back at all. Dump a whole bucket on Krishna's head and he'll do the same to you. You can take Radha's, you can be on Radharani's team, you can be on Sri Krishna's team, you can be one of the gopis, one of the gualbals, it's up to you. But in your meditation, play holy with Radha and Krishna. And eventually, when our heart is fully purified, simply by doing bhakti, then we'll get to physically meet them and play holy with them anytime we want. Because any leela can happen any day of the year. <laughs> in the divine world, it can be holy any day you want. You can play holy anytime with Radha and Krishna. And you can do so in your meditation as well. So we're going to sing a holy pad, another pad written by Jagadguru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj, with all of this in mind, that the ultimate goal of our life is to meet Radha and Krishna. We live in this world, but while we live in this world, we have to remember that our aim is the attainment of divine bliss, the attainment of the divine love of Radha and Krishna. This is why Radha Madhav Dham is here, to help you incorporate this into your life. So that when you leave here today, you take something with you. You take not only the memory of having played holy and celebrated holy, but you take that understanding with you that you belong to Radha and Krishna. And they're waiting for you with open arms, waiting to play holy with you. But you have to come to them. You have to, you have to desire them. So Radha Madhav Dham is here so that you can keep coming, keep remembering that this is the aim of your life. And then in your life, while you work, while you're with your family, while you do all of your responsibilities, you integrate this devotion as part of your life by remembering Radha and Krishna throughout your day and taking some time out to come here and do some pure bhakti to them whenever you get the chance. Radha Madhav Dham is here to serve you in that way so that you can realize the aim of your life. So with these thoughts in mind, we'll sing a holy pad.